Carrie Hilson has been involved in the entertainment industry for most of her life. At the age of 14, she got recruited to join two different girl groups, one named Design and the other called Pretty Tony. Both groups would eventually dismantle, but the connections Carrie made opened up so many doors for her. She began a solo career and rose to the top of the charts with her singles Energy and Turnin' Me On. The platinum-selling artist always dreamed of becoming a household name, and she was well on her way to achieving that goal. But a series of unfortunate incidents caused her popularity to quickly fade away. Here's what really happened to Miss Carrie Baby's career. Carrie Hilson was born on December 2, 1982. She and her siblings were raised in an all-black middle-class neighborhood in Decatur, Georgia. She told Complex Magazine she grew up watching her dad sing and he passed down his love of music to Carrie. She told the LA Sentinel, I knew that I would follow music wherever it would take me. At the age of 12, she began piano lessons, but Carrie quickly realized that mastering the instrument wasn't her goal. She told the Bucks County Courier Times that after a few lessons, she asked her teacher to play the piano while she sung a song. Carrie said, my mom poked her head in and said this wasn't what she was paying for, but she was fine with it since it sounded good. Becoming a singer was the only thing on her mind, but her parents placed a huge importance on her education. After graduating from high school, she enrolled at Emory University and decided to major in theater. At the same time, she linked up with producer Anthony Dent, who has worked with Destiny's Child and Diddy, to become a part of his songwriting team. She also sang background for many popular artists, including Usher, Kelly Rowland, and Sierra. Carrie told Complex Magazine her first check was for $25,000 for working on Ruben Studdard's first album. She left college after three years and put all of her focus on the music industry. In 2006, she received her big break. And I receive a call that Timbaland is in town and wants to meet you. So I run upstairs, I compiled a CD together, she signed with Timbaland's Mosley Music record label. That following year, she was featured on Timbaland's single, The Way I Are, which topped the charts. In 2008, she appeared in the music video for Usher's song, Love in This Club. According to Wrap Up website, when it came time for Usher to record a remix of the smash hit, there were rumors that Carrie was in the running to sing on the track. But in the end, the final version of the song included Usher, Lil Wayne, and Beyonce. In December 2008, Carrie released her third single from her debut album, a song entitled Turnin' Me On. The dance track reached number two on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart. Following its success, Carrie linked up with producer Polo De Don, T-Pain, and Lil Wayne for the remix. The remix was leaked in March 2009, and in the lyrics, Carrie appears to take shots at her enemies when she tells an unnamed rival to sit down and quote, go have some babies. She also sings, go ahead and tell them folks how long I've been writing your songs. I've been putting you on, just check the credits. Everyone assumed she was either talking about Sierra or Beyonce. Sierra and Polo De Don had a scheduled in-studio interview with Atlanta radio station V103 in March 2009. And according to Wrap Up website, Carrie called into the station and said, I just want to tell Sierra it's not about you. Sierra was happy Carrie put the rumor to rest, and the two singers congratulated each other for their success. Carrie then made it clear she wasn't jealous over anyone else's career. She said, We are all like the same thing. Keisha's on my album. I've worked with Sierra many times. I'm a fan of Beyonce's. So if her verse wasn't about Sierra or Beyonce, who was Carrie referring to? The singer said the song was directed toward anyone who ever tried to take her down. She said, I'm not going to call their names because I feel I've addressed it. Her statement was too little too late. The beehive was already buzzing and they had their stingers ready. Carrie headed out on tour with Neo in the summer of 2009. And during that same time, rumors about her bad attitude began to swirl around the industry. During an interview with That Grape Juice website, she denied being cocky and she added, confident and happy and blissful and blessed and thankful. All of those things I am. Even though her 2009 was shrouded in controversy, Carrie headed into 2010 with two Grammy nominations for Best New Artist and Best Rap Collaboration for the song Knock You Down featuring Kanye West and Neo. She didn't take home either award, but she wasn't going to let that slow her down. 
She headed back into the studio and began working on her sophomore album. No Boys Allowed was released in 2010. Although it reached number 11 on the U.S. charts and the song Pretty Girl Rock swept the airwaves, the album was considered a flop. And things were about to get really interesting pertaining to her alleged feud with Beyonce. While walking the red carpet at the 2011 Soul Train Awards, Juicy Magazine asked a bunch of different celebrities to hold the latest copy of their magazine and give them a shout out. The magazine cover just so happened to feature Beyonce and Jay-Z. Most of the celebrities had no problem with the request, except for Carrie. Want to hold the magazine? Just shout out Juicy Mac. The singer eventually gave the shout out without holding the magazine. And before walking away, people couldn't help but notice the look Carrie gave the interviewer. Was Carrie upset for being put on the spot? Or was she still in her feelings over Beyonce landing the feature on Usher's remix? Before we could find out, Carrie was in the center of yet another controversy. In July 2011, she was out in New York when she posted a picture to her Twitter. The photo featured Carrie in a woman who resembled the late singer Amy Winehouse. Carrie's caption read, Amy Winehouse resurrected to party with me. As you can imagine, backlash ensued and Carrie's name began trending on Twitter, but for all the wrong reasons. She was called every name in the book, from rude to insensitive. After realizing how much her tweet upset so many people, she issued an apology, but the damage was done. Thankfully, there was a bit of happiness headed in her direction. In 2012, she reportedly began dating basketball player Serge Ibaka. Although they tried to keep their relationship out of the public eye, they would occasionally share cute photos of one another on social media. From the outside looking in, Carrie looked extremely happy, but no one knew what she was dealing with behind the scenes. It had been five years since the Turnin' Me On remix was released, but Carrie was still being targeted by Beyonce's fans. She finally reached her breaking point and posted a series of messages on her Twitter. She revealed she had been dealing with the backlash all day long for years. She also stressed that people on the internet don't realize how their words can damage someone's spirit. Carrie added that she had her reasons for saying what she said on the verse, but she instructed everyone to drop the situation. She added, as for my mistakes, God has dealt with me. She also pleaded for mercy during a 2013 interview with Hip Hollywood. Carrie once again insisted she didn't have beef with any female artist, but the scrutiny was getting out of hand. She said, personally, let's just leave it alone. It's going too far. Then came a very long break. The years passed by without a new release from Carrie, and no one understood why. She later revealed during the Silence of the Shame panel in Atlanta in March 2018 that she fell into a deep depression during her time away. At the height of my career, which was when Pretty Girl Rock released, I was bearing the weight of some personal and professional mistakes, and I was just not myself. I was severely unhappy. She attempted to make a comeback in 2016. However, before she could properly release her new song, some of her tracks were leaked to the public. Carrie voiced her frustration on Twitter and apologized to her fans. And Beyonce's fans swooped in to humiliate her and let her know she was no longer welcomed in the music industry. Carrie decided to put her music on the back burner again and focused on her acting career instead. In 2016, she appeared in the film Almost Christmas, the movie was a moderate success, but things in Carrie's personal life were falling apart. While promoting the film, she told Rolling Out magazine she could no longer be actively involved in social media because of all the hurtful things she would read about herself. She started to disconnect and take breaks from all the apps in order to find her inner peace and escape the negativity. During that same interview, she revealed that she and Serge Ibaka had broken up after four years of dating. In January 2017, Carrie appeared on The Real and said she was working on an album entitled L-I-A-R, which stands for Love is a Religion. But as of this video, the album has yet to be released. More years would pass by and Carrie finally addressed her lack of new music in a February 2019 Instagram post. She penned an open letter to her fans stating that she would love to release new music, but there have been so many blockages in her way. She said she had to step away from some people in her life. 
Some of them became too greedy, while others refused to recognize how much she has grown as a person and an artist. Her message was vague, which led many to assume Carrie had ultimately been blackballed from the industry for the unnecessary beef and drama she allegedly started so many years ago. Sad news was reported in January 2020 when Carrie revealed her father passed away at the age of 71. In a touching Instagram post, Carrie said she felt like a lost little girl without him. She ended her message with, So many wishes left in my heart. I hope you visit me in my dreams so they can come true. Our hearts go out to Carrie and her family during this difficult time. We hope that in time, Carrie will be able to heal her heart, bounce back, and channel her energy into some amazing music. Until that time comes, we wish her nothing but the best. Let us know your thoughts on Carrie Hilson's career, and thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.